Oh, the picture. Well, I'm gonna just. Guys, the name's Rena Dragula. Welcome back to Seduce Me, the Otome. Now you must be thinking, Rena, didn't you already do all of the guys? Well, yes, I did do all of the guys, but there's one person left besides the humans, like Naomi, Andrew, Suzu. Well, if you want me to pursue them, just tell me in the comments below. I will gladly do that. But today we're not doing them. We'll be doing the one and only. You guessed it, Diana. We're going to be seducing Diana because she's going to be important in the Seduce Me 2 game. So, And, and it's pretty important in this game as well because you learn about things you don't learn with the boys. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to not gain any points with the boys. We're going to have to let them go. As sad as it is, sad, we have to do it in order to seduce Diana. So, I will be skipping up to the parts that we haven't got to really. Only, only the important parts, really. I won't do any of the, you know, get making di making lunch or whatever, all that stuff. I'm just going to skip to the important parts, so I'll get right back to you on that. Alright, so we're back here. So I didn't do anything with the boys at all. I just went to my room and eat and played video games and whatever. None of that was really important anyway, so. We only have wait and fight. So what we're going to do is fight. I've, I've done this before, so when you fight, you'll win. Trust me. Waiting will only get you killed, basically. So you gotta fight. No way this was happening. No way was I going to let myself be a victim of this. I gotta remember. What was in that book? I had to explore the house, basically. So if you want to see how we explore the house, go check out my James Road, then come back. But we're just gonna fight right now. What are you whispering? Are you praying that the boys will come and see? <laughs> ah, nah, I'm gonna fight you on my own, Malix. Though I still love you, though. Uh, I kept grumbling, trying to remember and shut my eyes. Studying for a brief second wasn't enough to keep a spell in my mind, but I had to try something. Anything. Oh, I didn't even mention, I don't think I'm gonna be breaking this up. I think I'm gonna do Diana's whole route in this episode, just to get it over with, because I don't think it's that long. Hopefully it's not. But yeah, I don't think I, I don't plan on separating into parts. I plan on doing the actual full route. All of a sudden, the air grew still and silent. Oh, I opened my eyes and looked around and gasped at the sight. Everything was frozen in time, as if the clocks had stopped and everything had followed suit. What the? At first, I instantly wanted to move, but my feet were glued to the ground. I guess I couldn't change time and escape from where I was. But I was still lost. What was I supposed to do? A soft wisp of wind made me turn to a floating light purple orb. I stared as it glowed, giving off a warm feeling. For some reason, this thing made me feel happy and content, despite the reason I was in. My heart felt like crying, yet I didn't know why. It couldn't have been. Grandfather? It's Grandfather! As I muttered, the orb slowly grew and faded into a spirit of my grandfather from when I last saw him. I stared up at him, completely shocked that I was correct and that his form was standing in front of me. I guess it was a good idea to bring the Incubi here after all. What? What? 
Is it really you? What do you mean? Oh yeah, I think Damien told us that grandf th his grandfather led us. That our grandfather led them to our house, I think. My grandfather smiled before patting my head gently. I couldn't feel it, but I knew he tried. So I closed my eyes in acknowledgement before looking at him again. Sweetie, I'm sorry for not telling you. But I didn't know if you were ready to know. That you handle demon magic? Yes. Why? What is there to gain from learning and using demon magic? It wasn't a matter of gaining anything except knowledge. Through magic, I was able to learn more about the demon world and its wonders. I even met your incubi friends. You met the boys? Yes. It was I who helped them come here. But it seems it was at the cost of my life. Yeah, Damien said that his grand our grandfather brought them to the human world. What? Why? Why sacrifice yourself like that? None of this made sense. He died to bring the Incubi into the human world? Why? Why? You, you girl, they have their reasons. My mind was practically screaming in anger. I needed answers. With time being frozen, we had all the time in the world. Why would you die for something like that? Why leave us alone? Why leave me alone? I wasn't intending to, my dear. But now that I'm gone, you have a chance to find yourself without anything hindering you. What? Your father had always been so hard on you. I'm to blame for that. He learned of my studies before he married your mother and pushed me away, promising to never follow in my footsteps. Oh, oh dang. His father knew, our father knew about what his, our grandfather was doing. So that's why he's been keeping us away. As he was my son, I still loved and cared for him. I helped him in little ways from paying bills and making sure he had food to come home with by adding money to his accounts. You don't know how hard your father worked to get to where he is now. I stared, trying to take it all in. It was true that my dad worked really hard, but I didn't realize how rough he had it. When you were born, I couldn't have been any happier. I tried to give you as many toys as I could, but many of them were tossed away by your father to protect you from me. Aww, I would have gladly accepted the toys. God dang it, father. I thought I would never be able to see you. But when I found you on the street, I was blessed enough to be given a chance. After I brought you back to your parents, I asked your mother to convince your father to let you visit me often and he finally agreed. Yay! Why does that hate you so much? Why put that on me? Your father saw me as a monster. He was afraid I would hurt you. He wanted to protect you from me at all costs, even if it meant becoming a monster to you himself. Oh my god. You did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of. Oh. Uh -huh. He truly does love and care for you. But he doesn't want you to be as curious as I was. I'm already curious anyway, so too late for that. Ha. Curious? I chose to learn about magic. I grew curious about it. He thought that was wrong. So when I didn't give it up, he shut me out of his life. Oh. Uh -huh. What a stubborn old man. So I did the only thing I could do. I gave everything I owned to you, including my hidden books your father never knew of. My head began to spin. There was too much information. It was all going so fast, despite time not moving a single inch. I'm just so happy that my curiosity stayed with you. I'm glad too. I love exploring all of this stuff. So my grandfather met the Incubi. That seemed so surreal. I could hardly believe it, yet here was the spirit of my grandfather telling me. It was almost like a dream. So you introduced them to the human world? That's right. I told them about the wonders of our world and they all wanted to come to experience it. So I helped them come over and gave them everything they needed. They traveled everywhere and I helped them as they learned more about humans. Then, I suddenly stopped breathing. I don't know why, but I believe it was because my time was up. After I died, the boys tried to come back. However, Malix attacked them instantly when they crossed his path. I used the last bit of my strength to guide them to the estate so they had a place to stay to heal. So he was the one who brought the incubi to the estate, which is why we found them lying on the floor. So that's why they were in the house. But they said they didn't know that about the house belonging to anyone. I never told them it belonged to anyone. I merely told them to head to the estate for shelter until they could learn to live on their own. If the estate was meant for them, why give it to me? I never knew your father would move you in so quickly. Even still, you managed to learn of them and learn of the demon world. You even were curious enough to study the magic. 
Hallelujah. Why not teach me when I visited? You were too young to understand. I was hoping that you would make the choice to learn on your own when you were ready to handle it. And you did. I'm so proud of you. What are you saying? I've barely begun reading it. I don't remember anything. I will help you remember. Then, my grandfather gently bent down and kissed my forehead. All at once, my mind began to fill with spells and history of arcane magic, the demon world, and everything my grandfather had known. I looked up at my grandfather again, now able to remember everything and more as he smiled down at me. Never forget. Make your own choices and do what you need to do. Don't let someone determine your life for you. If you decide to never look at magic again, I'll understand. But now at least you know it's there. He missed a line. He said, he said don't let someone determine your life for you. And he skipped, not even me. Oh, oh well. My grandfather then patted my head before turning and walking away. I tried to follow after, still unsure and lost as ever, but my feet remained stuck to the floor. Wait! Please! He didn't turn back and he didn't stop walking. Soon, he vanished past the wall, leaving me alone once again. I gritted my teeth, trying not to cry. My mind was filled with both of the power to defend myself and a large amount of confusion I could never hope to, sh hope to shake off. I could feel the air around me start to move again, so I tightened my hands into fists, trying to push away my concerns. I had to remember, I was Malik's captive. I had to escape. After I escaped, I could figure out my life. Soon, the world around me returned to normal, with Malik's mocking me. I closed my eyes and began to mutter a spell from my memory. Spiritus Lumine, the forty dundium tuam. I can't even read that. Okay, let's try this again. Hold on. Spiritus Lumine, the forty dundium tuam. What the? Latin? What are you? Descendo! Descendo! All of a sudden, a wave of light burst from my body, washing over the room and pushing the devils away from me to the ground. As the light quickly faded, I shook my head, feeling a small weakness in my legs. My legs quickly hopped up and growled at me, obviously surprised, but irritated beyond belief. Where did you learn that? I will rip that top right out your mouth! Spiritus tenebrarum periculum prohibere! Come here! Malik charged at me, dropping the gun that I would never that would never hurt me to the floor and reaching for my face. However, I quickly crouched down and covered my head with my arms while a dark magic circle appeared at, under my feet. Above me, a dark shield appeared, blocking Malik from touching me. Ugh. How? Just a human! A human who knows demon magic, eh? A human who knows how to fight back, yes! I pushed against the shield, forcing Malik's back before standing. I wasn't some damsel in distress. I could fight for myself. I shook up the sudden appearance of numbness in my hands as I glared at Malik's, challenging him once again to come at me. Malik! No! Stay out of it! Kill this bitch my own two hands one way or another! Oh. As commanded, Eris stood away from us along with the other devils. The group watched, watching us with lo was lost in intrigue as I stood up against their leader. <laughs> oh, you must think you're some tough shit since you were so demon magic. Well, guess what, princess? Demon magic consumes energy. I can do this all day. If I don't lose all your energy, your ass is grass. Just in case you didn't hear that, and if and if the quality is blurry, he basically said, uh -huh, Oh, you must think you're some tough shit since, you're, since you know some demon magic. Well, guess what, princess? Demon magic consumes energy. I can play this all day and when you finally lose all your energy, your ass is grass. I don't think so. I think I'm going to beat your ass. I glared, knowing that what he said was true. I couldn't hold out forever, but I definitely had the energy to last a while until someone found me or until I could overpower Malik somehow. Malik charged at me once again, causing me to run backwards to keep some sort of distance. I could feel energy wanting to shoot out of my hands, so I pointed my palms at Malik's. Light purple spikes suddenly began shooting from my hands, forcing Malik's to skid back. Ooh, I had terrible aim, only to s able to scratch the edges of, Mal of his body with one or two actually stabbing into his shoulder and leg. Malik growled, pulling them out and throwing them to the ground. Quit playing around, Malik! I lowered my hands, feeling the numbness run up through my veins, 
to consume both of my arms. I began to pant, desperate for some relief before continuing Mal. For, before continuing, Malik smirked at the sight. Oh, for the love of God, please someone find me, I prayed. I hoped that I wouldn't have to keep fighting. I was becoming desperate. What made everyone in that warehouse drop our fighting faces was the screeching of police sirens coming closer to our location. Malik smirked even wider. Oh, shit. It's time to have fun, boys. Make sure you kill them all. Oh, shit. Oh? The devils all seemed to get excited and started to walk past us to meet with the cops, but a loud finger snapped, stopped them, and made them turn around. Malik and I looked to see Eris with her hand in the air, post-snap. Eris? What are you doing? Oh, shit. Enough, Malix. We've wasted enough time in this stupid town. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking the rest with me. Oh, she turned in your back on you! I didn't know whether to laugh or not. I bit my tongue as Malix got angry again. Like hell you are! Boys, do as I say, or else! None of the boys moved. Eris snapped her fingers again, causing the boys to rush back past her and out and other away from the warehouse. Malix, it's over. You can't even beat a human girl. You're losing your powers. Lower devils only follow higher-ups that actually have power. As what Matthew told us before. Ah, Malix can't even beat me and he about to get owned by Eris. Hey! Shut your mouth! Ooh, Malik summoned his gun to his hand and shot multiple times at Eris, who somehow managed to teleport away from the shooting line and reappear by us. She shook her head, letting out a sigh before grabbing Malix by the neck and pulling him off of me. Malik started to choke as Eris stared coldly at him. Oh! All this for a bunch of pretty boys. You must be stupid and desperate. She is right, you know. Eris looked to me, making me tense up. Human! I suggest heading home to your pretty boys. You don't want to get involved in a supernatural investigation. It's a pain in the ass. Oh, damn. She is, she's saving me. Holy crap, Eric's Eris, you are awesome. You are really, really awesome. Thank you for not killing me. You are just so awesome. Girl power, woo! She then turned to Malik, glaring daggers into him as he glared back at her. You really think women are weak? Let me fix that, sweetie. Oh, shit. And with that, Eris vanished into the shadows, taking Malik's with her. As I was left alone, the police siren stopped. I looked over to the open passage to see the incubi with a large police siren megaphone, staring at me in surprise. Where is he? I swear I'm gonna... He's gone. Eris took him and left. They won't be coming back. It was all so surreal. I was helped by a devil, but I quickly shook off the feeling. I was alive, and that was all that mattered. I fought to stay alive, and there I was. The boys tried to question me, but James cleared his throat, catching the attention of his brothers and me. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. Altogether, we began to walk out of the warehouse back home. There was no way in hell anyone was going to find out about this. It was over. Malix was gone, and the boys were finally safe. <laughs> You are an interesting creature. And here enters Diana. So I didn't want to show you with the boys because it was heartbreaking. Oh my god. I'm not, I am I really don't feel like showing it. So we had, to, we had no options to let them stay or let them go. We were just literally like, okay, you got to go. Bye. And then they all like left with the sad face. Like we'll be gone by the morning. I'm like, ah, no, this breaks my heart. And now Diana enters and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm sorry if I'm sorry if I skipped that, but it's too heartbreaking to see the boys leave. We all love the boys. Come on. I opened my eyes to see a woman staring down at me with a very sm sly smirk on her face. I opened my mouth to scream in fright, but a hand quickly covered my mouth. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. No screaming now. Too early, silly girl. I could only stare up at the woman above me. I still felt weak not having the strength to move her and fight her off. She was very beautiful, but I felt more anger than amazement. Hmm, why do the boys like you? You're unique, yes, but that can't be all that you have going for you. Rage began to consume my core again. This woman, whoever she was, was making me mad. 
She must have known that she let another smirk grow onto her face. Ooh, you're feisty. That could be why. Before I could bite her hand in anger, she removed her hand from my lips, standing up and staring down at me from her place next to my bed. I quickly sat up and glared daggers at the intruder. Who the hell are you and why are you in my room? The woman began to laugh, making the rage inside me increase. I wanted to punch her, but I waited for her answer. <laughs> How silly of me. I forgot that we demons are not well known of in your world. You can call me Diana, little human. Uh, this is the girl we gotta seduce. She may seem like a bitch, really. But, uh, maybe we'll start to like her once we get to know her better. Diana? Demon? You're a demon? I am. But I'm much more than just an average demon. What do you mean? Silly girl. I'm a succubus. I stared at Diana in shock. A succubus? First incubi, now a succubus. Great. I have now met, met both genders of sex demons. Diana crossed her arms under her bosom and looked at my body. Well, you are pretty. I know, thank you. But you seem very reckless. Too reckless. Eh. I moved out and stood from the bed, still glaring at Diana. Why are you here? Well, I came here to clean up what the boys clearly forgot to clean. Tch, men. So sloppy. What? What do you mean by that? I mean erasing your memories, sweetie. Uh, hell no! I just learned about what my grandfather did. I am not having these memories erased. This woman wasn't serious, was she? She comes into my room and spouts this? This was ridiculous. I began to walk towards my door, wanting to leave the room. The boys could get rid of her. I had no mind about dealing with her myself. The boys are gone, sweetie. I froze in place. What? They were gone already? No way. But they said they were going to leave in the morning. They left the I'm sad. I turned to Diana, glaring hard at her as she kept a smirk to me. You're lying. Am I? If you want to go see for yourself, you can. But I promise you'll be wasting your time. I stared, trying to find any hint if she was lying. She had to be. The boys wouldn't just up and leave without resting first. Right? Diana crossed her arms and waited for me to make a choice. I decided to believe her for now. I'd find some hint in this conversation. What do you mean? Take, take my memories. <laughs> well, we demons can't have just anyone knowing about us. You have to completely devote your soul to learning about us. And even then, it's not always guaranteed that you can be granted knowledge of us. What makes me not deserve to know deserve to know any everything? I was attacked by devils. I found the boys in my house, wounded and sheltered them. I think I deserve to remember those moments. Diana let out a laugh, running a hand through her hair before looking back to me, amused. Let's also mention about my grandfather knowing about doing demon magic. I need to know that. You were attacked by a gang and were almost killed. You found five homeless men and let them stay in your home. There's nothing special about either of these instances. Yes, there was! A human like you can't understand the rules. The boys themselves aren't even aware of the rules. They'll learn soon enough. Diana flipped her hair before looking to me with a stern look. Listen, sweetie. You're not going back to bed or leaving this house with those memories. I'm taking them from you one way or another. Oh, jeez. I glared, standing my ground. You're not taking my memories. I'm not letting you take them. And what do you plan to do with them, huh? Tell the press? Gossip to your friends that demons exist? Confess to your parents that you had demon servants and were almost killed by a devil gang? Now she was making me mad. Did she seriously think I was this stupid? These memories were precious to me and I wasn't going to let her win over my mind. But she kind of does have a point. I mean... Ah... Uh, wow... Well, no, wait. I think she can erase our parents' memories and such about us having Incubi boys, but we can keep the memory thinking of it and not telling anyone. I think. But then again, she might not agree to that and leave the memories, and then people will be questioning what, where are the servants that you had, blah, 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 and then we'd have no choice to tell them. So she kind of does have a point, but at the same time, she can erase their memories and let me keep mine. Yeah. These memories are important to me. I know that other creatures exist. I know that magic exists. I'm more open-minded now. Open-minded or gullible? 
What did she mean by that? The point of being open-minded was to be open to all thought. How is that anything close to being gullible? There is nothing to learn from remembering the boys that won't bring trouble. I'm merely saving you from that. There are more than just demons who want to keep their existence a secret. There are many creatures in this world that don't want to be known of. And you remembering a small fragment is not acceptable to them without good reason. Diana smirked. If you would have kept the boys, or at least had one of them around, they'd be a little more lenient to listen to your pleas. However, you're about to go into tomorrow without any of them around. I couldn't believe my ears. There were more than just demons? Other fictional creatures existed? There was a system? What? Diana sighed and, sighed and snapped her fingers, lifting my body up from the ground with her magic. Aw, oh, dang it. Look, I can kill you and no longer waste what little time I have, or I can erase your memories and go on with my life. I have more important things to do above arguing with you. Oh, dear. I looked down at the ground. What was that? I looked down at the ground or to, to see something that made every nerve in my body quickly quake in fear. On the ground was a large open mouth with sharp, wet teeth, leading to an empty black abyss. I could feel the heat from the mouth's breath pant against my floating body. Ah! That's nice. I looked at Diana, who was looking at me with a stern and almost heartless gaze. Make a choice, sweetie. Give up your memories or be a demon snack. I warn you, he's quite the biter. I was panicking. I was about to die. Again. The boys weren't here to protect me. What was I going to do? Make a deal with Diana. That's what you gotta do. Make a deal with Diana. Then I remembered. Demons had a conscience. They weren't heartless without reason. She could be reasoned with. She could to be reasoned with. She seemed like a businesswoman. With that get up. Uh, are you crazy? Wait! What? You're wasting my time. What about a deal, huh? Diana raised an eyebrow. I was afraid she wasn't one to listen. What if she was as ruthless as I imagined her to be? I'm listening. Wait, really? Was she really willing to listen to me? She didn't drop me in the pit of death, but she didn't let me out of her spell. Now was a good time as any to, tr as any to try reason. These memories are precious to me, but they're not worth lo me losing my life. Of course. I mean, if I die, people will wonder and try to find explanations to why I died or where I disappeared to. Then just hand over your memories. What if I traded them to you instead? You seem like a reasonable businesswoman. A trade is better than forcing me to give in, right? Hmm. This was insane. I didn't even know if she was willing to listen. She already had me hanging over a pit of death. The only thing I could hope for was her being forgiving enough to listen to reason. Well, speak your terms. What do you want in exchange? I let out a relieved sigh. She was willing to listen further. Well, what can you give me in return for them? I'm a demon. I can give you anything within reason. Money, men, women, power. Name it. Just make it worth the price. She, re she could really get me anything? My mind began to wander. What did I want? Power. Her! I heard Diana stifle a laugh. Me? Are you serious? What do you mean, me? I looked to Diana again. She was indeed scary, but she was gorgeous, and somehow she interested me. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, she does interest me. I am... Yeah, she's interesting. I am by so... Let's just leave it like that. More slow than the boys. Okay. Eh. I mean, you are sta you're I mean, you staying with me for a little while. I want to get to know you and these rules you're talking about. A human wanting to know more about a demon than the rules. You're really trying to step over your place, especially if you'll be losing those memories in the end. I'm serious. I'll give you my memories and energy if you just stay for if you stay just for a couple of days, a day even. It'll be worth it. Completely willingly completely willingly and if you don't fulfill your end of the bargain then you can feed me to your pit beast did that really slip out of my mouth was i really wanting to put my life back on the line again if it meant kept keeping my memories for a little longer then yes 
Diana looked to me, scanning my body with her eyes for any signs of false intent. I didn't have any, so Diana sighed and snapped her fingers again. The demon below me vanished, and I was slowly lowered to the ground. I looked at Diana in surprise. Ah, oh, yeah, we gonna have a succubus in the house. Yes! You are very lucky demon magic is so finicky. What do you mean? Why do you think demons make deals with humans like you? I wasn't sure. Demons were still new to me. I had heard stories of people making deals with demons and only ruin coming from it. Diana sighed. It's one thing to take your memories or your energy. It's another for you to willingly give it. We get more for our effort if the one we make a deal with is willing. Think of it like sex. If I'm aroused and you're willing to open your legs for me, I'll get pleasure. I'll enjoy it. You might enjoy it. And it's done. Oh my. But if you aren't willing and I force myself on you anyway, it's not so pleasurable for me. Even if I get what I want, it won't be as worth the effort. Strangely, that made sense. It was very much like a business. If I had what they want, they could negotiate for it or they could take it away anyway, but not without a fight. Were, were they all really business-oriented? My curiosity about demons grew as I realized what deal I had made. So, you'll stay for a couple of days? A day is enough. Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, sure, fine. Yes. Yes. Diana looked at me up and down once again. I felt a little naked all of a sudden under her gaze, but I ignored it as she shrugged. All right. Diana kept her eyes on me, unsure what was going on from the look on her face. So, what do you want to know? You're obviously curious about demons enough to make a deal with me. My first thought shot to her, but then I remembered the boys. Not all of my questions were answered, and I wanted to know everything. First of all, who exactly are you? Diana chuckled before crossing her arms. You may refer to me as simply Diana. As I said before, I'm a succubus, and I intend to bring the boys back home. Back home? What do you mean? Back to the demon world? Precisely. They don't belong here, and it's imperative that they return. Why? Did they not tell you? They're runaway royals. Eh, I, I knew that. I couldn't be believe my ears. What? They were royalty? Why would they run away from royalty? They had their reasons, girl. We know about them. Diana simply smirked at my new surprised face. Ah, so they didn't tell you. How unfortunate. You were in the presence of a demon prince and his noble brothers and you didn't even know. I felt myself unconsciously walk over and sit on my bed. They hid something gigantic from me. Why? Do they not trust me? There, then again, it had only been a couple of days. Exactly. Yet they helped me and were here for me regardless, acting like servants instead of noble men. I gripped my head in frustration. What am I supposed to believe? Believe whatever you wish. The confusion will fade away soon enough regardless. I looked at Diana, who only gave me an almost somber look in return. She was serious about removing my memories, but she would keep her end of the deal until I learned all I could. That I and I felt thrilled to have her. Maybe it was because she was a succubus. I didn't know. It's the boobs! The boobs! I sighed and faced Diana. So how did you get to the human world? How did the boys get here? With the help of a human in both of our cases. There's truly no need for details beyond that. Any human can cast a demon summoning spell. It's just a matter of what happens during the summoning and after where things get tricky. What do you mean? Well, if a human is willing, only part of their life force is taken from them, and they are given one chance to open a bridge between our worlds to allow the demon they desire to come through. The more demons come through, the more life force the spell takes. Luckily for the poor human that brought them here, the boys sacrificed some of their own powers to open the bridge instead of letting the spell feed solely on the human. The human lived, and the boys came through. That almost made sense. Something in my mind clicked, but I couldn't clear it out to figure out what it was. I only nodded to Diana. And you were the same? Somewhat. However, I don't care to go into details about how I came here. You'll forget soon enough. That's not part of the deal. You wish to have me around for more information. 
I get to decide what information to give. Cheater. It's not cheating if it's not a broken rule. Oh, God damn it! I huffed and crossed my arms and legs. Diana was a game player and I didn't like her rules. However, there were the, they were the rules I had to accept in order to keep my memories a little while longer. I, I'd find a way to remember. She wasn't going to win. Diana let out a small chuckle and ran a hand through her hair. Mm, well, I believe I should head to bed. If I'm to stay here, then I need some form of sleep. I watched as Diana crossed through my room to the door and opened it. She turned to me with a small wink. Have a good night. See you in the morning. Before I could respond, she exited my room and closed the door behind her. I stared. It was like she was in control. I almost gritted my teeth at the thought. She wasn't the master of the house. God damn, all right, right, I am the master of this house. I was. Oh, okay. One point. I huffed and crawled back under the covers. How did my life get so complicated? What was going on with me? I must have had serious bad luck. I sighed and covered myself with my blankets, wanting tonight to end. I needed tomorrow to come. School would take my mind off of things. If school actually happened, anyway. Huh? I awoke that morning minutes before my alarm. I felt slightly groggy, but I didn't exactly feel bad. It was more of a physical exhaustion with a mind ready to take on the day. I stretched and quickly changed into my clothes before heading downstairs with my bag. As I reached the lobby, I stopped and sniffed the sudden new smell in the air. Breakfast? I continued my way to the dining room to see Diana laying out a plate covered with sliced fruit. Sliced fruit. Ooh! On the table there were delicious smelling eggs, toast, bacon, ham, veggies, and juice. I felt my mouth salivate. That's a lot of food. Can I have all of it? But then I remembered that it was Diana serving breakfast and I shook my head. Oh, come on! It's food! I don't care if Diana's supposedly the bad guy here. It's food! What are you doing? Ah, oh, you're up. Come. Breakfast. I didn't know what you liked, so I made everything I knew humans ate for this time of day. I walked over and scanned the table before giggling. Diana raised an eyebrow at me. And what is so funny? You didn't make everything breakfast related. You forgot a couple things. Like what? Coffee, pancakes, waffles. Diana looked almost insulted before looking to the table and recounting the plates. I laughed harder, making her glare at me. I haven't been in the human world long enough to know everything, alright? Unlike the boys, I know little to nothing about what you humans eat in your homes. At the mention of the boys, I suddenly remembered them. They treated me like part of their family, caring for me and making sure I was okay beyond anything else. They were serpents to me and I let them go. We gotta do it, girl! We gotta do it to seduce Diana! I let out a sigh at the memory. Little did I know that Diana stared at me the entire time. I shook my head and looked to the table, getting an empty plate and filling with it with what I wanted before sitting and eating. Diana remained standing, watching me. I felt almost naked under her gaze, so I looked over, pausing my eating. Aren't you going to eat? I already ate. What did you eat? You really wish to know. Yes. I wanted to know more about demons. I wanted to know more about her. Of course, I said yes. Diana stared in surprise at me before smirking a bit and reaching into her cleavage. I watched as, he pull as she pulled out a small purple vial. She popped the cork and poured a mere couple sip fills into her palm before recorking the vial and placing it back at her in her dress. What? What? Okay. Diana closed her eyes and closed her hand. What was she doing? This was odd to watch, yet at the same time, I was practically at the edge of my seat in curiosity. What was she going to do? Her hand started to open, almost like a blossoming flower, and revealed a small peach-sized peach fruit. It was, almost, it was purple and had almost an enchanting smell to it that made my food seem almost disgusting. A plant from the abyssal plains. We call it a sweet flower. Would you like to try it? I don't mind. Sure. I nodded, staring at the fruit. It looked absolutely glorious and delectable. I couldn't resist grabbing onto the chance to try it. Diana nodded before cupping the fruit in both hands and pulling the purple flesh from the fruit, revealing a juicy blackish center. As if it was cut on the inside, Diana pulled out a perfect slice and handed it to me. Oh. 
I must say, you may be the first human to try this fruit. You should consider yourself lucky. I am lucky. I nodded, not pulling my eyes away from the fruit slice in my hand. It was juicy and its clear juice painted over my fingers. Somehow I didn't care. I wanted to try it and savor it. I lifted the small slice to my lips and took a small bite, feeling ecstasy, ecstasy run through my mouth. I almost couldn't fight back the moan that was erupting from my throat. It was sweet, yet it was slightly tart. It was the perfect combination at and at the same time, it felt so unnatural. I felt not only ple pleasure in my mouth, but my body began to feel energized and warm. All of that was from a small bite. I swallowed the biteful and let out a pleasurable, a pleasure to sigh, making Diana smirk slightly at me with a raised eyebrow. I couldn't lie to her about how it tasted. It's delicious! That it is. They're natively grown in my kingdom, so I have the pleasure of enjoying these every day. You have a kingdom? I do. The boys are not the only royals in the demon world, sweetie. I just so happen to be a princess. I stared in surprise. She really she was really a princess? How? She looked so mature. She was more of a queen than a princess. Yeah, true. I mean, look at the outfit. Look at that outfit, girl. You rocking it. Really? You're a princess? You seem more like a queen. For a split second, I swore I saw Diana blush, but as she started to laugh, I shook my head at the thought. You flatter me, little girl. You best be careful. I may just take your flattery as an invitation to take your energy. Ah, shush. I shut my mouth, feeling a blush run across my own cheeks. I returned to eating the fruit, hearing her chuckle and eat the remainder of the fruit on her own. Surprisingly, I felt full from just that small slice. How could that be? The only explanation I had was that it was a demon fruit, so I mentally accepted it as just that. What I didn't expect was Diana leaning over and lifting my chin to look down at me. Messy, aren't you? Huh? I stared as Diana came closer and gently kissed my cheek by the corner of my lip, making me gasp slightly. Whoa! We are- this escalated very quickly. What was she doing? Why was she kissing my cheek? I was red in the face already and here she was taking advantage. Diana pulled away and slightly licked and popped her lips. W what? You had a little juice on the side of your lip. It was bothering me. You could have just wiped it off with a finger like Matthew did on my with the cake batter on my cheek. I ran my fingers over where she kissed me and felt my fe red face grow even hotter. Diana chuckled slightly at the sight, making me almost glare at her. I didn't know if she was flirting with me or trying to embarrass me. Ooh, either way, she was winning. Eventually, my alarm started going off, reminding me to be ready for Naomi and Suzu. I don't know why I said that. Right, school was a thing. I stood from my chair and grabbed my bag, walking out of the dining room. And where are you going, might I ask? I have to go to school. Ah, I see. I looked at Diana, feeling that she was up to something. She had her arms crossed, looking to me as if I owed her something. What? Well, I don't exactly want you to leave this house with the memories you have. I'd be breaking the rules if I allowed that. But we had a deal. You stay for a day. I keep my memories until you leave. I still have to go to. St I still have school to go to, though. Then skip school and stay home. Gladly, Diana. I will skip school. I would do that. Trust me, I would do that. But then the consequences of attendance. See, I constantly live with the fear of my parents finding out I skip class. Because, you know, strict parents and whatnot. So, yeah. But thank God, high school's over. But then, college. Ugh. Anyway. What? That, or I go with you. What? Dana was crazy. To suggest going to my school was practically signing a death wish. Everyone would ask about her. What would I tell everyone? That's crazy. I can't let you leave this house with those memories unless I'm with you. Rules are rules. What rules? The rules of the world, sweetie. Rules of the world? What was she talking about? The rules applies to any magical being that lives in the human world. They were established on a day you humans might know as the birth date of Jesus Christ. Wait, so does that mean Christianity is legitimate? It's a story to some, a religious faith to others. I won't deny or prove a religion exists because that's a human matter. 
Magical beings, on the other hand, don't pay attention unless they're angels from the world of heaven. My curiosity was pecking at my mind like a frantic bird. I wanted to know more. Diana was giving me answers and I wanted to ask more questions. However, I had to go to school. I was conflicted. Stay, and I'll tell you more of these rules. And if I go? Then I take your memories. Now. I was trapped. There was no way I could bring Diana with me without some repercussion. If she took my memories now, then I'd go to school without remembering anything. However, if I stayed, I could learn more. But I'd miss school. Stay! Stay! I bit my lip. Did I really want to stay? I could feel my fingers run over my phone and call up Naomi. Without even listening to the phone, I spoke into it. Hey girls, I'm feeling really sick. Don't worry about coming and don't come over. I'm staying home and getting better. I hung up without even acknowledging Naomi or Susie on the other end. Diana crossed her arms and waited for me to turn to her fully. I threw my back to the side and looked to Diana, ready to learn more. You're going to tell me everything. I'll do the best I can. I walked up the stairs with Diana behind me. I glanced into the dining room to see it already clean. I guess Diana used magic to clean up after all. After us. I continued and wound up walking into my bedroom. I sat on the bed as Diana stood by the balcony window. It was just like last night. So I can ask anything and you'll answer, right? I'll give you the best answers I can give. Knowing Diana, it could have been a white lie. She already had hidden some details, but I guess she had her reasons. However, I, was, I would need to know more than just details. The rules of the world, what are they? They are the heart and soul of the human world, created and approved by all five worlds on the human date, December 25th. Five worlds? In human terms, there is the human world, heaven, purgatory, hell, and the abyss. What are the rules of in this agreement? These rules dictate the behavior of otherworldly creatures in the human world. Without them, there would be constant war between angels and devils, while the vampires would try and enslave humanity. Oh. Demons are merely the watchers, but often the devils or vampires will try and coax them into joining them. So angels and vampires exist too? Yes. Angels are from heaven, watching over the human world with a careful eye. Vampires are from the human world, but pass on to purgatory before rebirth. Oh, dang. I stared at my lap. This was all amazing, yet this was, wasn't satisfying my curiosity. Did I want to know more? Did I want to Did I want to know just about demons? This was all a huge deal and I felt both over and underwhelmed. So these are rules So these rules have rules over humans? Humans can't know about magic at all? Correct. Humans to the angels need to remain pure and innocent. So they dictated that humans cannot know of the other worlds or of other beings. The rest of us agreed. Only a select few are allowed to know the truth about us. Well, that's hardly fair, isn't it? Well, take a look at yourself. You're barely proficient with magic. Your kind is too focused on who will fight the next war or who will screw the next person. Oh. I'm sorry to admit this, but humans are the weakest race in the planes of existence. The only ones who truly protect you are angels. I'm going to agree with Diana. Screw humans. Screw it. I don't want to be considered a human. I really don't. Because humans are dumb. Anyways. I felt angry that she made humans sound inferior. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Whatever. Yeah, we had our faults, but it wasn't like any of the other races were better, right? There was no way humans were the inferior race. Well, we're not inferior. Oh, you're not now. Really? Diana stared at me, looking me, looking me up and down before smirking a bit. Let's go on a little trip, shall we? What? I raised my eyebrow. What was she? Go what was she on about? First, she wanted me to stay here. Now she wanted to go out. What was with this girl? Before I could protest, the world began to spin around me, forcing me to jump and grab onto Diana. She held me as the room spun practically out of control. My fear escalated, and I buried my face in her shoulder, wanting it to stop. If she, if she was trying to prove a scary point, it was working. Oh, we're in a business office. I felt the world slowly around me. I felt the world slow around me and soon come to a halt. I didn't know 
I didn't want to look, but gently Diana pushed me away from her body for me to look around. I gasped when I realized that I was in a business office. What? What is going on? Where are we? Just a simple business office. Nothing more. I looked around and felt an air of familiarity to the room. I couldn't figure out why, but my ke brain kept me aware that I knew this place somehow. It didn't, I didn't get to think on it long. Suddenly, a group of businessmen entered the room, stopping at the sight of Diana and me. Oh shit, Diana, what are you doing? You're gonna get us in trouble! What the, Who are you two? Oh, oh dear. I froze. What was going to happen? We were going to be thrown out, get in trouble, and I would never be allowed out again. This was a mild nightmare. Diana's giggle stopped my thoughts. I looked up to see her smirking at the group of men, a hand by her lips. Why, do you not know who we are? For shame, for shame. What? Diana guided me to a chair and sat me down before sitting on the table. I practically turned red as Diana hiked her dress to where her entire leg slipped out from the, sil from the slit. She crossed her legs and tossed her hair gently. Oh dear. We are your employers. This lovely lady is the CEO of the company, and I am her personal secretary. You men, however, are late. Oh, the picture, though. I'm gonna just... Okay. Diana, what are you doing? Oh, jeez. Besides the picture, what are you saying? Are you gonna... I need water. Okay, let's just continue on with this story anyway. I stared at Diana, and she stared down the group of men like a tigress with her prey. The group collectively began to shuffle in nervousness, surprising me. Were they really believing her lie? How? Diana smiled and lifted her leg slightly, making the men lean in for a possible panty shot. I couldn't help but feel both stunned and slightly just girl. girl what the hell, Diana? Diana, stop! One of you needs to come over here and kiss my foot as an apology. Oh, dear lord. Dear lord. What? I looked at Diana's foot, seeing it gently bob in slight impatience. Was she seriously going to make one of them kiss her foot? They obviously couldn't be in that enthralled with her enough to stoop so low. Then again, this is Diana we're talking about. Succubus. Okay. I let my thoughts become destroyed as I watched a man step out from the group nervously and get on his knees in front of Diana. As he gently cradled her foot in his hands, I tensed and held my breath. No way. The man gently kissed over Diana's foot, making me almost making almost a sultry sigh escape her lips and send a shiver down her spine. Diana smirked and leaned back on her hands, looking down at the man before her. My ankle next. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. God. Like an obedient servant, the man trebled her kiss to her ankle as Diana let her head fall back with another sigh. Diana, what are you doing? Proving to you how weak the human mind is. Ah! You don't need to do it like that! Diana raised a hand above her and snapped her fingers, causing the group of or ogling men that remained to straighten up like an army of, at attention. I felt myself ten tense and catch my breath in response, but I couldn't feel any power over me. Water, a massage, another kiss. With each command, a man would se separate from the group and fulfill it obediently. I, ooh, I watched as each man became practically a slave to her whim. Diana closed her eyes and let out a pleasured hum, making my spine tingle again. For some reason, this irritated me beyond belief. Watching her be pampered by enthralled men made something crawl in my chest. Something dark. I wanted it to stop. I think you're feeling jealous, jealousy, sweetie. That's enough, Diana. Diana and the men around her suddenly looked at me. Diana was a little surprised, but then slightly smirked. Oh my, is someone a little jealous? Yes! Yes! Stop it! It's not like that. Just stop it. You've proved your point. Well, it's that. It is that. But at the same time, it's not. Uh, confused mixed feelings. Diana chuckled, making me wince. Would she stop? She wasn't obedient like the boys, so who knew with her? Diana then snapped her fingers, surprising me and forcing the men around her to huddle together where they were previously. I have proven my point, haven't I? 
Oh well. I guess I got a little carried away. Yeah, you did. Diana ran a finger over her lower lip and giggled at my face, though. What? You're adorable when you're jealous. Shut up! My face turned red instantly and I covered my cheeks, glaring at Diana. She giggled again before snapping her fingers and making the room around us fade away into darkness. A mere breath later, we were back in my bedroom, we, with both of us on my bed. Diana stretched her arms up and smiled at me. So, now do you understand the vulnerability of humanity? I gritted my teeth. Humans weren't as weak as she claimed. I couldn't believe it. Just because we were weak didn't mean that we couldn't know about those who were supposedly more powerful than us. I glared at Diana. That justifies ignorance? How does that justify ignorance? Ignorance is the only safety humans get to have. If humans were to know about us, do you know what kind of chaos would occur? For once, I felt scared. Diana's eyes were cold as ice as she stared into my soul, practically giving me the frightening feeling of the future I questioned. There are already wars in the human world being fought amongst yourselves. Equality, dominance, power. The human world is practically the image of self-chaos. Innocent blood is spilled every day in your world. It doesn't matter the color or creed you carry. Which is true. You think blood is spilt now? There will be much more if humans knew about otherworldly creatures. Our existences can destroy beliefs and human logic. I felt the world around me go dark as I stared at Diana. Sounds of screaming and battle raged around me. But I kept my eyes to the one person I could see. Was this an illusion? Was this a trick? It didn't feel like it. Religions would crumble and civil wars would clash. Paranoia would be a constant in every human mind. And soon armies will rise up, trying to defend humanity without true knowledge of who we are and what we can do. Vampires would be forced to retaliate and build armies of their own. And trust me, they're not as friendly as the vampires in your human fictional drabble. Eh, I'm pretty sure vampires aren't that nice. Pretty much. Devils would have a heyday and wreak havoc, finally finding a collective weakness in the human world to exploit. Angels would have to come down and fight their devil rivals, and the human world would become their battlefield. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. I could see the world Diana described flash, bef described flash before my eyes. I could see humans screaming and fighting each other, trying to figure out who is what and being frightful with every blink. I imagined devils like Maliks ravaging cities and killing people while soldiers tried to fight back, feeling and dying at every turn. The image was scary and I didn't want to imagine it. I shook my head, holding it in both hands, before looking to Diana. My room had returned and Diana stared back at me. To my surprise, she had a concerned face. The rules are to make sure that we all stay at peace. To have us all fighting at once would result in a massive cataclysm that would engulf everything and everyone, no matter what you were. Diana finally broke away from the gaze she held on me and then stared at the far wall. I could see a look of fear rush through her eyes as she looked away from me. I almost felt sorry, but my confusion covered my concern. Demons already have enough on our collective plates. We don't need to become the backlash victims of broken ignorance. Diana... Something in Diana's eyes made my heart almost hurt. Even though she wasn't looking at me, I could almost see all of the emotions that ran in her mind just by observing her eyes. I felt bad, terrible even, for questioning her as I did. I was only human, after all. However, I felt the need to comfort her. Something was going on and Diana wasn't holding it back. Whether or not I learned more by comforting her almost didn't matter. Uh, take her hand. I felt myself gently scoot closer to, to Diana before laying a hand on hers. Diana stared at me for a brief moment before shaking her head frantically and shutting her eyes tightly. A soft s sigh escaped her lips before she looked again at me with a almost a new resolve. I'm fine. I was merely trying to prove my points. The day then became filled with Diana teaching me about magic. Even when the day ended, I needed to learn more. I began to crave it. I begged Diana to stay, despite knowing our deal. Diana, despite promising to only stay a day, agreed to stay longer to tell me more. Soon, days passed by, filled with lessons and examples of magic. So she got to stay with more days. Did we skip a lot of school days? 
Yes. Knowing that I would be missed at school, Diana quickly took care of making sure I wasn't missed. Using a simple spell, as she called it, she created an illusion of me to go in my place. It was real to humans and acted just like me, but it was like a ghost to demons. Oh, nice one, Diana. Thank you for understanding that I have to go to school. I kind of wished I would remember that spell. She told me of vampires, creatures that looked, like, that looked just like humans who had an inner hierarchy. There were four types of vampires, but all of them were under oath by the rule of worlds not to hunt humans. It was strange and it felt like a fictional novel, but Diana promised that vampires were not like the books. They had adapted to living with humans, creating a formula that allowed them to walk around during the day. They even had a blood bank as currency and made synthetic blood to quench their thirst. They had real blood to drink, of course, but they got it either through hospital blood drives or black market... Fuck. Black market stuff, whatever. The devils were as chaotic as Malik's was, but they were still all under the command of the very powerful fallen angel and devil kin, king. Satan. He, however, still had the heart of an angel. He was simply sitting in, sitting in hell and waiting for an opening into the human world. Oh. I hoped it would never come. Angels, on the other hand, were not as I expected. When I thought of angels, I imagined be beautiful human-looking creatures with wings and halos. I still wonder who spread that rumor. Diana explained that they actually looked monstrous. Each arch... arch archetype of angel looked different but diana couldn't describe them all the only the one that stood out the most to me was the seraphim she described it as a mysterious creature that hid behind three large pair of wings whoa well if this well anyone who has met a seraphim and tried to find out has not lived to spill the secret fuck me man i was trying to ask a question my fingers keep slipping sorry you guys I gulped. It was scary to hear that, for some reason. Angels were strict and were not as forgiving as many claimed. I know that. I definitely know about that. Uh, uh you guys will know soon. According to Diana, they had a love-hate relationship with humans, but they didn't try to dominate us. They only became me mediators for the rule of the worlds. Why not? I'd rather not get into that. Why? It's not my place to talk about heaven. Only the angels. She also mentioned their methods for m memory removal. As the self-proclaimed guardians of the humans, they have the right to baptize humans who held memories of otherworldly creatures should they find any in the human world. This baptism not only erased the memories of magic, but erased their entire memory clean. Humans wouldn't remember who they were or who, who they were or who they knew. A blank canvas. Uh. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about... Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll explain it. In another video, I'll explain what I was thinking just now. Demons, however, unlike the others, were passive creatures that only truly cared for their own. They had their own lands, kingdoms, and lord living there. The most powerful demon in the Abyssal Plains was the Demon Lord. He was the Incubi Boy's father, and he was a ruthless man. He definitely is ruthless. He's a bitch. He had conquered several kingdoms with a massive, indestructible army. Many demons died under his brutality, but when he did conquer, life for demons was like the human renaissance. Many feared what land he would attack next. However, to everyone's surprise, the demon lord had tried to be peaceful at Diana's kingdom as she was offered as a bride to one of his sons. Why would you accept that? I had no choice. I was barely a child when the decision was made, and when I learned of it, I had accepted it. Why, though? How would you know if you would be in love with the guy you married? Cough, Freestroke, cough! It didn't matter. My kingdom would be safe, and I would be able to live with knowing I was able to protect my kingdom. I stared at Diana. Ooh, excuse me. I stared at Diana as she smiled at me with sad eyes. She really didn't want to marry them. It was practically painted all over her face. Uh, you shouldn't have to marry someone you don't love. Diana's face shifted to one of surprise as she looked to me. I was being honest. She shouldn't have to marry someone to protect the kingdom. That's true. Diana, you do you. You gotta marry someone that you love. Not so marry just for the kingdom. But unless... If you care about your 
family and your kingdom more than yourself, I mean, it's okay to do that. But at the same time, you need to be happy as well. I see you, I see you as someone who'd rather put someone else's happiness over yours. And I think I'm grateful for that for you. Because it's kind of like me too. It would be safe, yes, but you would be unhappy. Can you live with yourself knowing that? I'd rather be unhappy than see my kingdom burn to the ground. See? Besides, as the bride of the next demon lord, I'd have the ability to change things. I could disband his armies, bring peace to the abyssal plains. Ah, I see. You, but you're so, that's so sweet of you, man. But what about love? Love? Dana looked at her lap and sighed. Love can't exist for me. I'm the most powerful succubus in the demon world. Anyone who would go after me would only be entranced by my power. I'm not. Diana chuckled, making me blush a bit. I was being honest, and here she was laughing at my words. You're a human, dear. You can't know when I'm using my powers or not. I could be using them now, making you interested in me to trust me. Hey! But you're not, are you? Diana then silenced herself. She stared at me, knowing that her silence would give me my answer. I smirked at her. You like me. W what? You like me. You definitely like me. I do not. I'm merely fulfilling my end of the deal. I felt like a tease. She was being nice to me, and it wasn't using her powers over me because she liked me. She liked me. As a happy would say, you love her. <laughs> it was too obvious. You like me, you like me, you like me. Oh, oh no. What I didn't expect was her taking my hand and forcing me closer to her. Forcing me closer to her. I A mere inch separated our lips, but Diana's stare into my soul made my mind go blank. Ah, please don't do that. I was just joking. Ah, but you are hot. Okay. I barely remembered what I was saying. Diana remained holding me. I didn't fight. She stared into my soul and I allowed it. I was concerned at the same time. And at the same time, I was intrigued. Diana was indeed a beautiful woman. Seeing her up close, seeing her up close, made my face turn slightly red in embarrassment. Any moment, she could lean in and kiss me, making me even take my energy. However, she didn't. You are interesting for a human. She then released me and stared at me, watching as I stared back with at her with a red face. Uh, did I like her? Yes, you do. I shook my head. No way. That was impossible. We were just in a business deal. Nothing more. That's a lie! Is there anything else you wanted to know? How did it get today so quickly? I'm, I'm gonna just... Okay. I stared at her as I thought. Was there anything else I wanted to know? I, my memories were forfeit in the end, so everything was up for grabs. Yet I couldn't think of a single question to ask. Was that all I wished to know? No, there was nothing else I needed to know. I felt satisfied. No, that should be all. I understand. Diana stood and adjusted the bottom of her dress before smiling at me. I barely noticed how much time had passed between us. It felt like forever, yet I enjoyed learning more. I felt bad that I had to lose my memories. However, that was the deal, and, according to Diana, demons never go back on their word. Well, if you don't mind, there's one place I need to visit, and I'd rather visit it now than after I take your memories. I'll be gone from the area for quite a while, anyway. Huh? Where do you need to go? A cemetery. There's something I need to do there. It's boring, sadly, but I need to do it. You need to come with so I can watch you. Why does she need to go to the cemetery? Does she have a human friend she needed to say goodbye to? Does she have to meet with another demon? Sure, let me- No need to get dressed up. It's just a brief visit. Diana snapped her fingers and the world melted into black. I stood and walked to be beside Diana, unsure of what was happening. Why wasn't the world spinning instead? Was this spinning a trick she did? I felt myself click my teeth in irritation of that, of that thought. Soon the world grew back its color and we were standing in a field I somehow recognized. I looked down, I looked down and regretted it. Are we seriously in front of our grandfather's tomb? Oh, no! At her feet was my was grandfather's gravestone. It was untouched and as clean as when I last remembered seeing it. Why were we here? Here we are. Here? I stared at Diana as she muttered a small incantation under her breath, and her hands formed a small vase with purple lilacs. 
She gently knelt down and placed them beside the grave. I had to pay my respects to this man. Huh? Why? Were you a friend of his? I needed to know. My mind began screaming. Something wasn't right. Why did she know him? How did she know he was dead? What was their relationship? What was going on? No. I wasn't a friend of his. I didn't even know him. Then why are you giving him flowers? <sighs> my mind began to screech louder in my head. What was it? Why? Why? Diana, why are you giving him flowers? You don't need to know. I highly doubt you knew this man. Yes, I do. Diana stared wide-eyed at me, a mixture of fear and surprise mixed in her eyes. My heart began to squeeze tightly in my chest. Why was she looking at me like that? Tell me because I know this man. This man is my grandfather. You gotta tell me right now. How do you know him? Answer my question. How? I said answer my question! I couldn't hold it in my voice. I couldn't hold in my voice. I needed to hear her answer and I didn't want to hear anything else. Anything other than her answer would infuriate me. Diana looked down at the grave, letting out a small sigh. My heart tightened further. Answer me. I needed the answer. This man helped the boys come to the human world. He opened a bridge and let them through, before sealing it with a part of his life force. There was more. I knew there was more. I remained silent as she took a breath. I had come to visit their castle one day, and when they told me that the boys were gone, I became frantic. Without the contract marriage, the demon lord would have had the freedom to march on my kingdom and conquer it. I couldn't let that happen. So see, she was being sincere and wanting to get the boys back to save her kingdom. It wasn't just for power. So I tried to find a way here. I searched the castle during my brief visit, trying to find out where the boys went. I found it. This man left behind a small trace of his spell, small enough to be undetected by the inhabitants of the castle. Diana looked to me, a look of pain on her face that made me, that made my already pained heart feel like it was punctured by needles. Demon magic is best with consent, but takes more energy when forced. So, in a blind need, I recast the spell and used that man's life force to open the bridge once more and seal it completely when I walked through. I didn't know I was taking the rest of his life. She was the one that killed her grandfather. Oh my god. She... By the time the bridge closed, the man had already passed. He was visiting someone in a nearby hospital. So when I left to find the boys, the staff had found him and tried to revive him. I didn't want to take his life. I thought he was a younger man. I didn't know he was as old as he was. She... It's my fault this man is dead. But I needed to come to the human world, and he was my only chance to get close enough to track the boys down. You. Diana tensed up and stared at me. Her face was painted with, re painted with regret and sadness, something not like her usual self. You killed my grandfather. Your... your grandfather? I'm not gonna attack her, I'm gonna run. I needed to leave. I needed to go. I quickly turned and ran, hearing Diana call out for me from behind. Wait! I ran. I didn't look back. I couldn't look back. She started all of this. She was the one who turned my world upside down. She was the reason for this chaos I was in. She was the reason our grandfather died. The boys coming back and entering the mansion. Me finding the boys and all of this chaos. Ah! She took my grandfather away. I ran through the gates of the cemetery and through the streets to my house. This time, the world was in slow motion I was one going in fast forward. I didn't care what was going on around me. I just needed to run. My heart began to freeze in my chest, pained by the feeling of needles and knives piercing through it. Tears were running down my face, but I knew where I was running. I ran through the front gates of my house and sprinted inside. I zipped up the stairs and ran into my room. As I slammed the door behind me, I began to weep violently. I leaned against the door and slid to the ground, crying. My world was crumbling and I didn't like it. My world was broken apart and I didn't want it. All I could do though was cry. My heart denied me from thinking about anything else. I cried. I continued to cry. I let my heart empty of its pain with each tear that ran down my cheek. This is bringing me back to when my grandfather died. Jesus Christ. I don't want to, I don't even want to think of that.
help. Oh, do I have to? Oh! <laughs> that was so bad. My scream echoed through my room, bouncing around and reverberating into my ears. I didn't care if it hurt to hear it. I didn't care about anything anymore. All I cared about was crying. I curled into a ball and cried. I didn't even know when I passed out. I didn't remember closing my eyes and letting darkness take me. The darkness was comforting. I felt my sadness numb within it. There was no reality in that darkness to haunt me or hurt me. I wanted to stay within it forever. However, my body forced me to open my eyes. I saw the room focus around me and I realized that I was staring at the ceiling. I was in bed, under my covers. I sat up and looked around, stopping to see Diana lean leaning against the balcony window, looking away from me. Why was she here? Did she carry me to bed? I felt my anger wanting to speak out against Diana, but I noticed the puffiness around her visible eye. Had she been... crying? Oh my gosh. Seeing her bloodshot puffy eye made me fully aware of my own eyes and how dried they had become after crying. I rubbed my eyes and let out a shaky sigh. I'm sorry. I stared at Diana. My heart didn't want to hear it, but I let her speak. I didn't want to come here in the first place. I only thought of bringing the boys back to protect my kingdom, so everything else became secondary. I didn't mean to take his life. But you did. I did. I can't ask for forgiveness, but I still am sorry. Mm. If I could turn back time, I would find another way. I... You know... It's because of you that I met the boys. Huh? I looked to my blanket covered lap. I remembered the funeral, the moving, the meeting with the boys. Everything came at me at once, and now I had the one puzzle piece that fit it all together. If my grandfather hadn't died, he'd still be living here, and he'd be the one taking care of the boys instead of me. But he died and gave me his estate, so I came and met them for the first time. I looked at Diana, seeing her sad face. I could tell she really regretted her choice and she was upset. I couldn't sense any deception in her. I guess I have to thank you for introducing me to them and to magic, since my grandfather couldn't do it himself anyway. Diana looked down, pressing her lips together and closing her eyes. I... I need to take your memories now. What? Hell no! Hmm. A deal's a deal. I fulfilled my part and told you everything. I had nothing left to tell you, and you can't keep those memories. Hmm. I didn't speak. I watched as Diana argued into the air about taking my memories. It felt like she was now doubting the deal, now wanting to take away the truth from me. Did I want her to? This was my chance to return to ignorance. I never remembered that she took my grandfather's knife. life. I would re never remember everything she showed me and taught me. I'd return to normalcy. Don't. I need to know everything. I need this in my brain. I need to know about this. No, you're not taking it. Diana stared at me, a look of almost despair on her face. I, however, kept my eyes to her. You took away my grandfather. What gives you the right to take my memories away? But, but I... I'm not done speaking. Diana shut her mouth, listening obediently. I needed to speak my mind. She had no right to take anything away. You tell her. I knew the truth now, and that was all that mattered to me. Screw the rules. I deserve to remember everything. I was thrown into this mess because of you. No one had, no one has the right to take anything away from me. Such, wow. Uh, I'm gonna just repeat it. No one has the right to take anything away from me. Diana took a step forward, a step towards me, and I was ready to snap at her. However, she gently leaned over me and ran a hand over my head. All right. What? I won't take your memories. How do you not take your memories? I stared up and her in shock. Was she serious? Diana smiled at me and stood back up. You're right. You deserve to know everything. It's the least I can do. I felt almost joyful. She agreed with me. This was a huge deal. I still didn't forgive Diana, but it was better to know than to be left in ignorance. Ignorance. Eventually, I would be able to move on. Until then, Diana was willing to stay and teach me the life my grandfather knew in redemption. It was something. Head back to sleep and I'll teach you more in the morning. I'll stay a few more days until you know everything. Something felt off, but I nodded, feeling exhaustion drip, drift over me. Was it natural? I didn't know. My head began to spin and I needed more rest. Diana, Diana gently laid 
me back down and moved her moved hair from my face. Rest. As if from a spell, I closed my eyes and fell back into an unconscious darkness. My heart was healing and it would take time to heal. Thankfully, it had time now to heal and to grow stronger. Diana obeyed my word and stayed with me. She owed me so much already and stayed with me for a good week. Within that time frame, she not only taught me everything she could, but she also assisted me in learning some of my own hidden magic. I could barely believe it. I had demon magic floating through my veins, and I could use it at any time. If I had learned about how to use my powers earlier, I would have stayed. I would have been as strong as a demon. Diana explained that humans who learn of demon magic attract the demon energy and have the potential to use some of it just like demons, but their full power can only be unlocked in the demon world. Ooh, being that my grandfather spent almost his whole life learning about demon magic, his energy carried through my father, then to me. When my dad left my grandfather, his energy diminished, but when I came to the house, mine began to grow. According to Diana, I shouldn't have as much energy as I have. I guess I was lucky. Everything was fascinating. I felt waves of excitement and energy run through my body. I was aware of the energy I held and the magic around me. I could even sense Diana's energy, as powers as powerful as it was. One night, however, as I slept, Diana began to waver. What am I doing? I heard Diana mutter, waking me from my sleep. I opened my eyes and peeked over my covers to see Diana looking out my window. She looked tired and restless. I need to get the boys and return home. My kingdom is in danger. <sighs> Maybe I should call an angel. My heart froze. She could call in on an angel. It would baptize me and make me forget everything. I panicked, but I heard Diana sigh. But she... she makes sense. Why should I marry to protect my kingdom? I should be able to... well, would I? Ugh. Me against the demon lord's entire army. I'm not that strong. Aww. I slowly sat up, looking to Diana still. She seemed to only focus her attention out of the window, unfazed at my rousing. She's strong, though. The magic in her veins would win me this war. Ugh, but I can't take her magic. I care for her too much. But she's just a human. I, but... She loves me! Diana sighed and opened the window. I need to leave. I have to fight him on my own. I'll use the rest of my energy to get back and hopefully recover when I get there. I hope he hasn't already attacked or is ready for me. Diana stepped out of the window and stood on the balcony. Was she really going to leave? What about me? Was she was she going to leave? Was she going to leave? What about teaching me everything? My curiosity was speaking again and I needed her here. I don't know what drew me to her, but I quickly rushed out of bed and ran to the balcony. Wait! Diana turned around and stared at me in surprise. However, she tightened her hands into fists and turned back around. Go back to bed. I need to go. But you... I need to go. I'll be back someday. But I need to protect my kingdom. Without the boys, he'll attack at any time. And I need to prepare myself instead of waste my time here. I couldn't believe it. She was really wanting to leave. I overheard her. She wasn't confident about winning. She probably couldn't if he was as powerful as she claimed. I'd never see her again. Take care of those memories while I'm gone. You need to keep them secret at all costs. If angels find you, they'll... Take me with you! I couldn't believe the words... I couldn't believe what came out of my mouth. Diana turned to me, almost surprised at my words. What? I couldn't deny myself. I needed to fulfill this curiosity, and if Diana was going, I was going with her. It was as... I, if I was with her, maybe she could win her fight. And then come back to the human world with it, with me. My, an adventure. My heart felt giddy for some reason at the thought. Take me with you. I overheard you. I have the power to help you win your war. I'll help you and then you'll come back with me and teach me everything. But I don't deserve your help. I... I demand it as a deal, demon. Oh! Diana straightened up, staring at me in disbelief. I almost couldn't recognize my own voice. In redemption for my grandfather's life. You will take me with you and teach me everything. I will then win your war. And, in return, you will return with me to the human world to continue teaching me until I have learned everything. Diana stared. I couldn't tell what was going on in her mind. Was she angry? Sad? Surprised? As Diana closed her eyes and smiled, I felt a wave of relief wash over me.
A tongue of ice, even when faced with danger. Diana then looked at me and held out her hand. Come then. Help me open a portal, and I'll take you with me. Oh, snap! I nodded and placed my hand in Diana's. For some reason, it felt nice to touch her hand like this. She was going to take me on an adventure I could never forget. Oh. She then gently pulled me to her, and both of us began to float up towards the night sky. Diana's embrace seemed safe, and I felt better in it than out of it. Sorry, Grandfather. Diana looked down at me and ran a hand over my cheek. You don't know how much this means to me. I nestled into Diana's hand and closed my eyes. Diana gently lowered her hand to my waist, staring hands to my waist, staring down at me as I opened my eyes. You intrigue me. I giggled. Don't you mean seduce me? Ha! Huh? Get it? Seduce me? The title? Okay, I'll shut up. Diana chuckled and grinned at me. <laughs> yes. You seduce me. I smiled before, gently reaching up and kissing Diana softly. FINALLY KISSED HER! She stared, surprised, before closing her eyes and gently returning my kiss. There was no pull of energy nor warm fuzzy enthrallment. It was a simple kiss. YES! It was the one kiss I felt was perfect to start my adventure with. The sky began to melt into darkness as Diana and I kissed each other. I wasn't heated or... It wasn't heated or passionate, yet that kiss spoke many languages to me. Diana liked me and came to care just a little for me. Was this the start of something? Maybe. It was too early to tell. Maybe we'd find romance in the demon world. Maybe not. I still had a hundred battles to face, a thousand memories to make, a million stories to write. However, this was the change I needed in my life. And that was my ha happily ever after. My adventure and... Oh, jeez. Okay. Alright, so that was Diana's route. That took so long. That took over an hour. I expected it to be less than that. Oh, well. Okay, now I will officially start Seduce Me too soon. I don't know if it'll be today, later today or if it'll be tomorrow. But if you want, I'll put a poll in the link below, in the description below. You can click on it. You can vote for who I should seduce who I should do first and seduce me too. And if you want me to seduce any of the humans, like Naomi, Suzu, or Andrew, or do any of the human realms, just tell me in the comments below and I'll do it. So anyways, thanks, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!